Hello everybody, thanks for watching. This is part three of my Acorn CNC conversion. And in this video, I'm gonna be working on showing how to uh, connect the motor drivers, the limit switches, and some of the basic functions of the milling machine here. Um, so to get this started, I, uh, I was actually responding to some comments today and I had stopped working on this machine about a month ago because there was an issue with backlash and it was only on this Y travel. Um, and I really came in here, opened this up, assuming that this belt was gonna be in worse shape, but I was never able to get the right parts to change what was already there. So this is what, these are the pulleys and the belt that were on this machine from the very beginning. Um, and the inner diameter of this pulley is actually too big for the size motor I've got. I made a bushing, but the other issue is the size of the, the length of the shaft coming out of the stepper motor. So it's given me a lot more backlash than I expected, but I was actually getting a bunch just because these needed to be tightened up. It hadn't been maintained in a while. So I'm going to go back in and adjust backlash. I probably won't get into that too much, um, but you'll have to use whatever measuring equipment you've got to figure out, to basically calibrate how far the machine actually moves when you tell it. Um, depending on the precision, you can do this with a tape measure. It's not going to be very precise, but depending on the job you're doing, maybe that works. Uh, you can do it with a dial indicator like this one, and it's good for um, one thousandth of an inch. There's other gauges that are out there that do ten thousandths, hundred thousandths of an inch. Um, but ten thousandths of an inch to a thousandth of an inch is about cover that about covers it um, so to get things started here let's go ahead and fire up the machine um, to begin there has been some issues doing this and I'll, sh I'll just let it go ahead and go but basically the computer fires up oh, power helps the computer automatically fires up and so at the same time that the acorn board gets power and that's led to a communication fault on boot up um, one thing that i plan on doing moving forward is to install a little on off switch for the controller here that way i can wait until the computer is actually booted up before turning on power to the acorn board because that is giving me a a fault you're going to see here in a second um, and so hopefully that helps you through that. Maybe I can speed this up. Okay, so we're sitting here at the screen now. It says establishing communications with Acorn. Uh, this is not going to work. Instead of waiting for it, I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel out um, and force the program to close. All right, program's closed. I'm gonna go unplug the controller and plug it back in. And now it should work. Now I've waited to plug the controller in until like I'd flip the switch with it unplugged, wait for it, give it five seconds, plug it in. It seemed to work just fine. Um, but we'll go ahead and go back in here. And you can see it's, it's loading up Acorn. So this is, uh, I had it go ahead and auto enable keyboard jogging. Um, so it automatically puts this screen up. You can close it without um, losing the keyboard jogging function. And then uh, with everything set up here, I'm just gonna go ahead, clear and home it. So right now it's homing Z travel now it's homing X and you can see my uh, the old timing belt here. It's not too too bad. I, I think I got rid of all the backlash. I have it set for 36,000. Um, that's a lot of backlash. I was complaining about the Grizzly Mill having 8,000. Hopefully this uh, fixes that problem. I just had to tighten up the nuts here. 
All right, so we've got everything set to home. Um, and let's go ahead and I'll show you the connections that I'm using to get the limit switches going, the stepper motors going with all four axes. There's also some home limit issues. Um, I don't have any uh, limit switches or home switches on this axis. Now you can see it's still homed it and it's calling out zero, but basically I had to go into the homing routine program, the sub program, and delete a line out of that program. And you have to do that every time you update from the acorn wizard. I got to go back into the homing routine and delete that line. Um, two ways I could go about fixing this issue. I could put a limit switch on here just to tell or a home switch I'm sorry not a limit switch but a home switch to say okay that's where zero is or I can individually instead of having all of my home and limit switches grouped together um, which I'll show you how I've got it set up now I would have to individually use six different inputs one for X home X limit Y home Y limit Z home Z limit um, and then it wouldn't do that I'll show, you, I'll show you both ways to do it. Um, well, I kind of just explained the one way. So first off, uh, go ahead and just hit auto spindle. Oh, pretending this is a touch screen. I hope someone laughed. All right, so we got spindle forward here. We got spindle forward there. Stop that, spindle reverse. Oh, still waiting for it. There we go. Spindle reverse. And we've got spindle reverse. And then I got keyboard jogging enabled here. So this is the slow jog. And fast jog. All right, so let's get into wiring. All right, everybody, welcome to the spaghetti factory. Um, we are serving wiring. So here I have, I'm using the parallel port because my motor drivers are set up for five volt logic. And apparently I can't get that off. Well, it might be easier just to pull this plug. I have already turned the machine off here. So in here, I'm using pinouts two through nine to send step and direction signal to each of the motor drivers. I just hacked off the ends of a couple of, or a piece of Cat6 networking cable, stuffed it in there, wired those up, step direction in order as per the diagram that I'll show you here in just a second. So I got that on Amazon. It was fairly inexpensive and I'll put a link in the uh, description there. Then for over here, I'm using, okay, first off, they have you daisy chain your 24 volts coming from the power supply into this far end connection here. Um, I don't know why they didn't just put that internally on the board but they've got you routing it. Oops, this thing's routed to a, uh, let's see if I can show it, DIN rail, 35 millimeter DIN rail in there. Not very well anchored down apparently. All right, so that's plugged back in. So then this one, this one here goes to the emergency stop and then we've got red and blue here. And um, one of them is home, the other one is limit. Over here on the relay connector, um, I have stuff. Um, I'm only using one of these right now. I have power going for the automatic oiler. Um, and then I just went ahead and pre-ran another wire down there as well. Um, it's not being used. Over here, I have the connections for my VFD. And I'll go over that in a minute. It was a little bit more complicated because my VFD um, was a little bit different than the ones on the wiring diagram. So I'll show you how that gets connected in a minute here. Um, those power connectors were already pre-installed right here. Um, they came hooked up to the 
power supply for the acorn board. And then from that, I've got my uh, five volt going into this terminal block. And that's actually feeding the five volt positive to each of my, uh, that's five volt positive, right? Yeah, five volt positive. And that's feeding the step and direction hots on each of the stepper motors. So again, just using Cat5 cable. Um, and you can see, I, I went ahead and color coded, coordinated, but I guess it didn't really matter. So these are the negative five volts step and direction. These are just five volts coming in from the power supply. And I did that for each one of the stepper motor drivers. Anything else to go over in here? No, I think that's it. All right, so um, outputs for the stepper motors, just um, follow your guides on those. And then I've got the uh, power supplies there. Um, all right, so here is the, this is the standard wire schematic. You get a zip file from Centroid that covers smaller breakdowns of each of these systems, but this is like the basic wiring diagram. So right here, you can see um, that's the parallel port, how I would how I wired up starting from two through nine. And then let that focus back out. There's your limit switch connections coming in. And it is showing them going to common. So that's why you've got your 24 volts coming in here from uh, over here where the power comes in, you can see that 24 volt wire they ask you to run through. So that feeds 24 then out to each of your limit switches. They hit common on the other side, that triggers your, your home and limit faults. And for the, let's see, e-stop shows right here. It's sourcing, or it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's sending the 24 volt signal out. And if it makes it to ground, that triggers an e-stop, or you can flip that to where if it doesn't go to ground, it's open, then that triggers an e-stop, and you do that in the software. We'll get into that in just a minute. And then, let's see, what else do we need to look at here? The VFD. So they're showing, now I was just using the basic forward reverse, and they're showing using outputs four and five and going straight to the VFD from there. Um, that didn't work for my VFD, and I'll show you why here. So this is the cover for it, and it uses, let's see, I guess we gotta go to that one? No. Okay, so if you look right here next to my thumb, it shows you what those do. So open is, oh, come on, focus. Open is disable, closed is run. And then the next pin, digital input two, is forward or reverse. And here it's either forward or reverse. Here it's on and forward or reverse. So wiring that up was a little bit tricky with the relays. And I'll show you what I did here. So on these relays, you've got three outputs. And you're using, or three pins, and you're using two relays. Let's call this relay four and this relay five. And so this one's going to be for forward. This one's going to be for reverse. So I've got coming in. I've got 24 volts coming from the pin one right there at the top, 24 volt output. So that's going to the center pin of the relay. Now that's going to be normally connected to this side. And then when you latch the relay, it connects down to this side. This side, I went ahead and jumpered all the way over to there. So again, same kind of thing. You got your normally closed, and then when that relay goes active, it flips over here. From here, 
I send this as on or off. And I jumpered these two together. And from here, I sent this one to the reverse connection. So we got 24 volts. It automatically goes up to here and sits here hot. You go forward, that relay closes. 24 volt goes out to the on off terminal which is output two or digital input one there and the spindle goes in forward now if that is latched in i'm not activating that relay then it's in the normally closed position and that sends the uh, output for on and off down to here at the normally open position so now if i need to go into reverse i turn on this relay it connects this direction, sending my output signal to reverse and back up over here and out to on and off. So it lights up both of these wires when this relay is on. When that relay goes off, it breaks these connections. And when this relay goes on, it's just back to forward. So I was looking at the paper, not the camera, while I was explaining that all. I hope it makes sense. Um, it does work. And if, you, if it doesn't make sense to you, but you're stuck in the same predicament, then you can do that. It will work. So moving on. All right, everybody. Uh, I want to say thanks for watching. I know I originally said I wanted to keep these videos down to about 10 minutes, but uh just not working out that way and being able to actually make progress into uh, the next video there's too much explaining on the little details so as far as getting the home and park routines corrected um, for not having the additional limit switch and for all the rest of the parameters that I'll be setting up in Acorn I'm gonna go ahead and make that the next video and uh, just want to thank you all for watching and I'll get that next video here posted up pretty soon if you want to keep up on this uh, build or if you want to help me out, please hit that subscribe yeah. Please hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the notifications bell and we'll be sure to bring more to you. Thank you.